after the break. This is where we give you one-on-one -on -one with the biggest names in the cricketing world and also in Indian cinema. First, we meet the greatest opening batsman in the history of cricket, Mr. Sunil Gavaskar. India captain Sunil Gavaskar was formally inducted into the ICC Cricket Hall of Fame recently in Dubai. He received the commemorative cap from fellow Hall of Famer and former teammate Kapil Dev. Sunil Gavaskar was one of the initial 55 inductees in the ICC Cricket Hall of Fame, which was launched in January 2009. He is now a part of the Hall of Fame that includes 72 male and female cricketers. Like most fellow Indians come from a cricket crazy family, we've grown up cheering and praying for our men in blue and it's just delightful to see our heroes being felicitated like so. Well, it feels terrific, it feels terrific, uh, it's uh, the biggest honour in the game. Uh, to receive a, uh, an award from uh, the ruling body of the game, the ICC, to be inducted in its Hall of Fame uh, is uh, is a huge honor. Uh, it's it's taken some time in, in the sense that it's been announced in 2009, but finally being inducted three years later, I guess they say uh, they the old saying, patience has its rewards, and so here it is, um, the reward is there. Or cricketer, or anybody, your ethic should be strong enough to hold up your head up and chest out and walk. And that's very important. No shortcut to becoming anything big. You know, Kapil Dev and Mr. Gavaskar are very close friends of mine. And uh, as you know, Kapil Dev has been inducted to the Hall of Fame sometime back last year. They was given the honor. And Mr. Gavaskar is the last one out of 50. Last three years, I think they're trying to find a place for him to give a, this cap. But fortunately, it was my luck and my honor that happening in my home, and I had to host it, and I was cherished for the rest of my life and my, and my family. Well, first of all, I must uh, say that uh, he deserves it uh, because uh, I've been following his career since a very young age, and uh, he has uh, contributed a great deal to Indian cricket. So it's a great occasion and a great honor uh, for me to be here today. Uh, to see uh, he getting this prestigious award in uh, international cricket, I am very happy that he got what he deserved. Hall of Fame is 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 a, is a, is a great honor. I mean, uh, whoever gets it is you know is, about, is, is supposed to be the the top man uh, at his uh, at his sport. You know, so I, I'm I'm really you know pleased to be here. And uh, you know, when he's got honored and he's he's just outstanding cricketer. I mean. We're, I haven't really played much with him, but I've seen a lot of him. And he's, you know, scoring against West Indies, scoring against Pakistan. I mean, the guy has done everything to become, become, you know, the top man, and he, he's done a wonderful job. And from one cricketing great to another, in the true spirit of the sport, I have been a huge fan of the legendary Imran Khan, and give him full respect at the way he has carried himself post-retirement. The loss of his mother to the dreaded cancer led him to open a hospital in her name, the Shokat Khanna Memorial Cancer Hospital, which runs purely on donations and funds. High Life Dubai is now giving you an exclusive peek into the Shokat Khanna Hospital Gala Dinner fundraiser held recently in Dubai. The 176-bed Shokat Khanna Memorial Cancer Hospital has an annual budget of 4.3 billion Pakistani rupees with most of the funds being contributed by philanthropists around the world. The hospital has been supporting over 75% poor patients free of charge. No such hospital anywhere in the world offers these services free of cost. He is also planning to set up another cancer hospital in Peshawar. The people present at this grand charity gala dinner also enjoyed a live performance by Pakistan's top pop band, Strings. 
along with live auction of memorabilia and raffle draws. There was a host of fellow Pakistani artists present at the event as they came to show their support, their faith and respect for the cause spoke volumes. I have been uh, with the uh, Shaukat Khanam Memorial uh, fundraising for the last 20 years. And uh, of course, because of Imran Khan, his honesty and the dedication. And there are lots of poor people who are patient, cancer patients. Because unfortunately, in Pakistan, there is no special cancer ka hospital koi hai, except Shaukat Khanam and high tech. So it's a great thing. I think uh, he's blessed. Our association with Shaukat Khanam has been three, four years back. We did a U.S. tour and that's where we actually uh, realized, you know, how uh, the whole team is working and, you know, this whole system is uh, just dependent on fundings and donations and, you know, the hospital, you know, they don't charge uh, money. After seeing that and after seeing the transparency, what they have, you know, we really felt that, okay, whenever we can, we should be part of this because we feel they're doing a great job and if we can contribute any bit, we should. Whenever they call us, we come, whatever we can do, we try and do it for them because they are like one of the few institutions who are sincerely working in Pakistan. This, this is a cause about humanity and I'm always there for humanity. Imran Khan, who doesn't know him? And he's, he was a leader as a cricketer. He was a leader as a Shokat Khan as concerned. So I think um, what Imran Khan Saab is doing it for this cause uh, is phenomenal. To be standing here and being a part of an institution like that who I know has made a difference um, in Pakistan, in the uh, realm of cancer and bringing, uh, you know, goodness to it, I've seen the results and uh, it's an honor for me to be part of something that I know works and I know that people behind it are very sincere and uh, they're very dedicated in bringing a change and bringing relief to cancer patients. I think it's a, it's a proud moment for me. I'm honored to be a part of this event in um, collecting funds for a noble cause. The whole purpose of existence is that, that uh, the more privileged you are, the more responsibility you have to the underprivileged. And if you, if you go on those lines, uh, you have contentment in life. So my message to the youth is that the secret of happiness is in giving, not taking. Any human being can have fame, but in order to have respect, one must have goodness of heart, love for themselves and the community around them. It's time now to meet the great actor turned life coach and author, Anupam Kher. about you is you is the name of the very inspiring book penned down by the versatile Bollywood actor Anupam Khair. The book is already earning rave reviews and had a special mention from none other than Oprah Winfrey at the Jaipur Literary Festival in India. Anupam Khair now brings his versatility from being an accomplished actor to being a life coach and author and we wanted to know how this transition happened. Hi, welcome on our show. This is your first time and I'm very, very excited to interview you. Thank you. Thank you so much. My first question really is, what keeps you going, you know, when you wake up in the morning? What's, what's the thought that you have in your mind? That life is beautiful. What keeps me going is life. What keeps me going is dreams. What keeps me going is my passion about life. What keeps me going is communicating, communication, com talking to people. I'm a people's person. And I feel that um, right from my childhood, I always wanted to be different. I could not be different uh, financially, economically. My father was a clerk in the forest department. I was not a great sports person. In fact, once my PT teacher saw me running and he said, even if you run alone, you will come second. So, so there was nothing so great about me. And yet I wanted to be different from other people. So maybe that drive, that passion made me an actor. 
and then I was not happy with just being an actor. I wanted to be unconventional. So when I was 27, I did my first film where I played a 65-year-old man's role in Saranj. And then I wanted to be also different that in India, you become typecast for the rest of your life. So I'm, I wanted to break that myth. And I managed to do films like Karma, Dil Ki Manta Nahi, Daddy, and Dil Wale Dulhaniya Le Jayenge, and at the same time, Khosla Ka Khosla and A Wednesday Day and Mainne Gandhi Ko Nahi Mara. Then I wanted to do theater and I didn't was, I, didn't, I, I think it was not a conscious effort all the time. Then I did a play based on my autobiography. I'm the first actor to have done his autobiography on stage. Talking about the play, I think that was, the, that was also a time in your life that you were going through a lot of uh, I was going through a very bad phase. Yeah, uh, and uh, it kind being, of changed. You being polite and nice about it. <laughs> there were challenges, yes, no, but I was going through a very bad, bad phase. I have wanted to be a tycoon like any other actor who earns some money. I wanted to sort of do lots of things in life. So I opened a television company. I went, my vision was bigger than my capacity. And, uh, but I'm happy uh, at that time that that happened. And then it went completely haywire. So I said, what do I do? Penguin and uh, Harper Collins had given me a letter of intent to write my autobiography. And as I was taping it, I was discovering that I'm only talking about my disasters and my failures and my setbacks, and I'm basically laughing at them. Uh, once the material was ready and I was going through it, then I felt that I'm an actor and I should not write it, I should perform it. Uh, and that's how it started. Uh, and the play based on my failures had given me much more money and success than any of my success stories. The best thing about you is you. All of us know this, but only few remember. It's about the strength that we do not recognize in our life about our own self. You see, this world is constantly trying to make you feel underachiever. It tries to dwarf you by its bigness. You are made to feel that you are living in a world which is frightening. So you, are, you start thinking that I'm living in a dangerous world. And then where do you get your strength from? You get your strength from your own self. If there is a, if there is a coward in you, there is a very powerful in you also. And also, I feel that if you leave your happiness in other people's hands, then they will make sure that you are not happy. <laughs> your happiness also has to come from within. So why not make yourself a reference point uh, rather than try and be somebody else. Every successful person has seen failure. Anupam Khair addressed this with us too. What my book says, the best thing about you is you, and the faster you recognize that, the easier the rest of your life will be. Because I think uh, there are so many great things that you possess. We don't pamper ourselves. I think what is happening now is that going to a parlor is pampering yourself. But that's not. That's beautifying yourself because you want to be somebody else. Uh, pampering yourself is being comfortable with yourself. I think if you learn to do that, and don't be scared of failures. I think failure is the best thing that can happen to you because you learn a lot with failure. Success is one dimensional and boring. Uh, failure is fascinating. So when you talk about failure, talk about failure as if it's a great success that you have achieved. The book was launched at Books Plus recently and is now available at all leading stores. So grab your copy and get inspired. Time now for me to take a short break. I'll see you all on the other side. Coming up after the break is an exclusive look at the annual bash hosted by High Life Dubai in association with Studio 8.